Jean Piaget's theory of cognitive development gave him the status as a leader in the development of children. I can almost guarantee that you will learn something about his theory, and there is a good chance that it will come up on one of your counseling assessments. His theory has four stages, sensory motor, pre-operations, concrete operations, and formal operations. In this video, we'll cover Piaget's theory, how he developed it, the stages of the theory and what's typical during those times, as well as some of the criticisms that exist around this theory. But first, my name is Keegan. I have a master's degree in counseling and I'm a licensed professional counselor. I make videos like this to help you better understand the world of counseling, psychology, and mental health. Born in 1896 in Switzerland, Jean Piaget was actually trained as a biologist and worked specifically in zoology. His interest in children's development seems to have been spurred on, at least in part, by his work with Alfred Binet. And if you're thinking that the name Alfred Binet sounds familiar, he worked on intelligence testing and you've likely heard his name associated with some intelligence assessments. The theory that Piaget developed about the cognitive development of children was based largely on the observations of his own children. Because of this, we can see some aspects of his beliefs coming through in the theory that he developed. Specifically, Piaget was considered a structuralist. Broadly speaking, structuralists believe that how a person sees or views the world will change with each stage that they are in. Keep this in mind as we discuss this theory, because for Piaget, we often see that each stage in the theory is distinct from the others. Piaget also believed that one stage has to be complete before a person can move on to the other. He was also considered to be a universal constructivist. This means that he felt as though the stages are universal and that all people go through the same stages. Now let's look at Piaget's stages of cognitive development. First, we have the sensory motor stage. He believed that this stage began at birth and continued on until around the age of two. This stage is largely related to reflexes and senses. He believed that the senses are important at this stage because that is largely how the child will know how to respond. An example of how the senses are important at this stage are that if a bottle is put to the lips of a baby, it's going to reflexively know how to latch on and suck on the bottle to get the milk or formula that it needs. Piaget believed that during the sensory motor stage, generally beginning around the age of nine months or so, the child would begin to develop a sense of object permanence. You might be wondering what object permanence is, and that's a great question. When a child develops object permanence, this means that they know that even though something is not within their sight, that the object still continues to exist. Before object permanence is developed, the child believes that if something is out of sight, it's basically out of mind, that it doesn't really exist in the child's world anymore. So developing object permanence, this means that the child is starting to recognize and understand that even though they don't see something, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist and that that object or that item is still within the world, it's just not within their sight. Piaget believed that children are also learning about causality and space during the sensory motor stage. As these are developing, Piaget believed that the child is starting to understand that they can cause things to happen. As they're beginning to develop a sense of space, Piaget believed that they would then start to understand that objects can move within their environment. Through the sensory motor stage, Piaget also believed that they would start to develop a sense of time and an understanding that things may happen in a specific order. The second stage is the pre-operational stage. This stage starts around two years old and will go on until about seven years old. As we talk about this stage, it's important to remember that Piaget used the word operations to refer to thoughts and cognitions and other cognitive skills that people might have. During the pre-operational stage, Piaget felt that children do not yet understand things from other people's perspectives. The word that he used to describe this is that children are egocentric. They can only understand the world from their own point of view. Piaget also felt that centration occurred at the pre-operational stage. Centration is when the person focuses on one part or one piece of something and the rest of it is ignored. In other words, they focus in on the one part that they're interested in and all of the rest of it fades away. Piaget also believed that during the pre-operational stage, children begin to develop schemas. Piaget used schema or schemata to describe the way the child mentally constructs their world. In other words, this is how they organize their thoughts and what they know. Piaget believed that because of schemas, this was something that allowed children to use symbolism. For example, if they're using a bottle to represent a rocket ship while they're playing, they're then using that bottle to represent or symbolize the rocket ship. And this was something Piaget believed happened because of schemas and at the pre-operational stage. Next is the third stage, which is concrete operations. This stage occurs from around seven years old until 11 or 12 years old. Piaget says that at the concrete operation stage, children begin to be able to mentally manipulate objects. 
or to be able to do mental tasks that allow them to better understand a wide variety of different things. A primary example of this is conservation. An example of conservation is if we have a container that is short but wide, and we dump all the liquid from that container into another one that is tall and skinny, and we ask a child who has not yet developed the sense of conservation which container has more, they're going to largely base that off of the size of the container or what they perceive to be the bigger container. So once somebody has developed that sense of conservation, they would then be able to answer that question correctly that the amount of liquid is the same. Piaget believed that during this stage, we're also beginning to see children mentally manipulate information with the concept of reversibility. In other words, they can understand how something was done and then mentally reverse or undo it. Finally, formal operations is the last stage. Piaget believed that this stage begins around 11 or 12 and goes until about age 15. However, Piaget believed that most people don't actually make it to the formal operation stage. In fact, some research shows that only about 25% of college students will use thinking that's indicative of formal operations. During the formal operation stage, we're beginning to see ways of thinking that are more abstract and hypothetical. Piaget also believed that they will use more deductive reasoning and that the person will begin to understand metaphors as well as use more experimentation. Those are the four stages of Piaget's theory. Next, let's talk about some additional aspects of the theory that might be important to know, such as how we take in and make sense of new information, as well as cover some of the criticisms that exist around Piaget's theory. But first, if you're enjoying this video and finding it helpful, please help me out by giving it a like and subscribing. Throughout the four stages, we're taking in and trying to make sense of all sorts of new information. As we do this, we have to adjust some of our thoughts to help us better understand the world. He used the word assimilation for when we take in new information. So according to Piaget, we assimilate new information when we learn something new. Once we've assimilated new information, we then have to adjust or expand our previous knowledge. This is what Piaget called accommodation. So when we take in and assimilate new information and then have to adjust some of our knowledge, that is called accommodation. Now let's look at some of the criticisms because as with every theory, Piaget's theory also has some criticisms that follow it. One of the primary criticisms of Piaget's theory is that it's based largely on his own observations of his own children. He didn't rely on studies or formal observations of other children. This is problematic because not only does it leave us with a small group of children that this theory is based off of, but it's also likely biased by his own beliefs and observations that he's made of his own children. A second criticism is that experts believe the stages don't occur in the neat and precise way that Piaget felt they did. In his theory, Piaget leaves very little room for variability from person to person. Experts believe that that's not really realistic because each person's going to develop in their own unique way. One example of this might be that we see a lot of children develop a sense of object permanence sooner than Piaget believed children would. A third criticism of Piaget's theory is that it was based on Western culture. Not only that, but his theory doesn't really account for how culture, education, environment, and other factors might influence a person's development. Finally, Piaget's theory receives criticism for ignoring the effects of emotions and the social environment on a child's development. I hope you found this video on Piaget's theory, his views, as well as some of the criticisms around his theory to be helpful. While you're here, make sure you check out some of the other videos on my channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.